Good morning. My name is Paul Bell. I'm president of Bellacor Inc. We design and sell tire pressure monitoring systems for RVs, big rigs, uh, farm equipment. And the purpose of this video is to uh, give you detail about how the tire pressure monitoring systems work and so that you can understand uh, some of the shortfalls of tire pressure monitoring systems. They're very sophisticated and uh, they have a lot of features. Ours does and others do as well. But they also have limitations and I want to uh, discuss those so that people can understand what is, what is happening. Uh, we wholeheartedly recommend uh, tire pressure monitoring systems. It's, uh, the first thing it does is it increases your awareness of tire safety and it also you have some visual information about the stress and strain that tires go through. Um, I particularly like when I'm on the road is firing up my rig then I can look through the uh, tire pressures of all the tires and uh, when you're getting on the road it's nice to know that there's not any problems uh, as you start off in the day. Um, Bellacore TPMS gives you uh, slow leak and also has a separate alarm for fast leak. Those alarms are always on. Other manufacturers uh, do the same. They also have a setting for low pressure tire. Uh, air, air pressure leaks out of tires just on a normal daily basis. It's, it's just normal, uh, especially if you change temperatures going up mountains and then down, the, you're going to lose some air over time. So there's a, uh, most systems have a low pressure uh, setting that you manually set for your tires, 80 pounds, 60 pounds, 110 pounds, uh, whatever it is. But there's another feature of tire pressure monitoring systems, uh, at least the more sophisticated ones, the cheaper ones um, don't necessarily have this feature, but you, uh, it monitors the temperature of the tires. And uh, this is particularly important if you have uh, a bearing failure or brake failure like I did uh, summer before last and um, avoid a situation where you could cause a fire, cause a lot of damage. And uh, of course, uh, it's dangerous as well. Uh, big rig operators uh, could and, and should take advantage of the temperature monitoring of the tires. If you have, there's, if you're overloaded on the driver's side, those driver's side tires will be hotter than the passenger side. So you get good information about your tires and um, it's probably maybe one of the most valuable things for uh, big rig operators. So I have a lot of information to go uh, through here. So we're gonna click along so this video isn't too lengthy. For those of you who may not have ever seen a tire pressure uh, monitoring system, let me just show you kind of a little bit in our, our box here. We use a separate monitor. There are systems being sold that are used with the phone, but uh, so far we have rejected that because you have the complications of the phone app, uh, the complications of the battery running down on the uh, phone, and um, you may, 99% of the time, you're not going to need a tire pressure monitoring system. You're just going to need it on that rare occasion when you have a leak or you have a low tire or you have it overheated. And I have a concern that these phone apps, uh, TPMS, they're going to have gaps when it's on and when it's off. We recommend that once you get on the road, you leave your monitor on at uh, all times. And it, it uses a very small amount of, of uh battery power so uh, and then uh, the sensors are uh, screwed onto the tire stem of however many tires you're monitoring so it's uh, it's small now um, each each of these has a uh, computer chip a circuit board that acts as a radio so it sends out a radio signal on a particular frequency 433.92 this is uh, FCC uh, mandated. So all systems use 433.92 except the, the uh, 
phone-based ones, they're using Bluetooth, which is just simply another, a different radio frequency. So uh, our monitoring system, and uh, I would say most others have, uh, it has a, a beeping alarm and also uh, a red light that shows if it's below your set tire pressure or if there's a slow leak or a fast leak or if there's uh, high temperature. So, uh, let me put this up here. So we have a separate uh, monitor that uh, the radio signal is sent from each of the sensors to the monitor. Now, each of those sensors has a, a radio ID number, and when uh, you pair the sensor to the monitor, ours are pre prepared, but most systems you have to do it manually. Tell the monitor where, tear the, tell the, the visual monitor where the tire sensor is located. And it, that's done with a radio ID number that's sent out in front of the, the data information from those sensors. Now, because all of these sensors are on this one radio frequency, it's impossible to read all of the sensors at once. Now, you'll see people on, on uh, different sales sites, they'll say, uh, they'll, it'll show all the tires on the monitor at once with the temperature and pressures, but they're not being read at the same time. That's a deception. They have to go around and they, there has to be a, an ID associated with each sensor so that that monitor uh, can read it. The only way to, that you could possibly read them simultaneously is if each sensor used a separate uh, radio frequency, which they don't and they're not allowed to. So uh, don't be, be fooled by that. Now, uh, for mo there's different ways to pair the sensor to the monitor Ours come prepared, but you can, with a couple of button pushes, you can move the sensors wherever you want to. I tell people on the phone, you can monitor your, your uh, bicycle tires if you want to. So there's a few button pushes. One of the complications about our system and others similar to it with the separate monitor and with phone systems too, um, you have a, a fairly sophisticated computer, but it only has a couple, four buttons to to make changes to so a lot of times for us you know when you if you press the code button a short click it goes into one function if you press it a long click it goes into another function and that's uh, it's a little uh it takes a little bit of a learning curve with ours um, you shouldn't have to do that but sometimes people want to move the sensors around they have a different configuration and uh, that's how that goes Okay, that brings us to our next topic, the use of repeaters, uh, transceivers, amplifiers in the tire pressure monitoring industry. There was a time when Bellacore made the claim that our system did not require a repeater. And that was true, it did not. It worked perfectly fine without a repeater. And our current system, in our new firmware, works perfectly fine without a repeater. Um, and, but this involves a issue with tire pressure monitoring that people need to understand. 99% of the time, you're not gonna need the alarm feature of a tire pressure monitoring system. 99 point, 9% of the time. But that one moment when you need, when you have a, a puncture, a slow leak, or a fast leak, and you need an immediate alarm, that's why we include a repeater with every TPMS system that we sell. Because of that very slight chance that you're going to need it. But when you need it, it must work and it must be accurate. Now. Uh, let me show you what a repeater looks like here. Uh, 
Uh, this is uh, the repeater that we use, and uh, it is attached to 12 volt power. It has feet for uh, attaching to your trailer, your um, uh, storage compartment in your fifth wheel, or the bumper of your truck. So the repeater actually gets paired to this monitor, uh, a radio connection. And what it does is not so much amplify the signal, but it gets the static out of the signal so that the little sensor sends a signal, the repeater listens to it, cleans it up, and sends it to the monitor so that the monitor has good, clear uh, data to interpret. Now, my recommendation as uh, a provider in the industry is that you do not use any system by any manufacturer without a repeater. Because as I explained before, there's just uh, too many, too much interference and too many opportunities for a poor uh, radio transmission from the, from the sensor. And uh, so, just a word of caution. Always use a system that has a repeater, whether it's a phone based or separate monitor based, doesn't matter. It's a little bit more trouble to hook it up to 12 volt power. So that's another issue. I mean, this has much more uh, uh, amplitude in the radio signal because it's on 12 volt power, not a very small uh, camera battery. So uh, be sure and choose a system that has a repeater. Okay, let's discuss tire stems and batteries in the sensors. Get a lot of questions about tire stems. It's a bit of a controversial issue uh, because that sensor attaches to the tire stem. And people ask, do I need metal tire stems? Can I use rubber tire stems? Well, uh, the best practice is metal tire stems. Uh, if you have new tires with firm tire stems, that also can be acceptable, but you do have to check it to make sure there's not excessive wobble. So <clears throat> we do recommend metal tire stems <clears throat> for people in RVs and uh, off the road applications and big rigs. It's just a it's another safety feature, so uh, they, they're not very expensive, but uh, the tire store <coughs> needs to put, put them in. Uh, people uh, in the past have put tire sensors on rotten tire stems, and that's really not very smart. You do have to use your, your best judgment. So we recommend metal tire stems and um, it's not an emergency, but when you change the tire stems, go ahead and put metal stems in. Uh, let's talk about another issue, which is uh, the battery inside the sensor. There is a small camera battery with the number 1632, and uh, to replace it, you simply uh, grab the metal base with pliers and twist off this vinyl cap. Um, there are providers that sell sensors where the battery is not replaceable and you have to send them in to have the battery replaced. I don't understand why anybody would ever buy a system that requires an extra charge like that. Um, also, if you buy uh, batteries with some bulk in like at Amazon or another provider, it'll save you money. They're, they're $4 at, at uh, big box store but they're very inexpensive on Amazon so and the other thing to do is when you change the batteries if you have a voltmeter handy go ahead and test the the batteries for uh, three volts because sometimes batteries come uh, come dead on arrival especially those uh, little camera batteries so uh, change your batteries we recommend that people change their batteries once a year. Do they last longer than that? Yeah, they'll last up to three years. But 
once again, when you're on the road, when you're on I-70, and you, you don't want your batteries to fail. So it's better to just go ahead and change the batteries. On our system, you can change the batteries and they don't lose their pairing to the monitor. You just change the batteries and um, uh, off you go. All right. Okay, let's discuss another uh, touchy topic in the uh, aftermarket tire pressure monitoring industry, and that is, is it possible to have a blowout and to not get an alarm or notification on your monitor? And the answer, unfortunately, is yes. And here's how it can happen. If you hit something and there's an instantaneous blowout, and then it instantly deflates the tire for our system and for others, pressure is what turns that, that sensor on. And when this pressure drops below, for us, 15 pounds, that sensor turns off. And uh, many times with the blowout, the sensor is blown completely off the tire. And so now this gets back to what we discussed before, the, uh, the last good reading. So if, if there's instantaneous depressurization of the tire, and, or if the sensor is completely blown off the tire, the monitoring system is going to use the last good reading that it had while it listens for uh, uh, good data. Now, and if it's instantly uh, depressurized and turns off the sensor, it can't send off, it, for us, it can't send any more information. So uh, it is a limitation. Uh, do people get, do people get uh, alarms when there's a blowout? Yes, they do, most of the time. Um, is it possible to have a blowout with our system and with others without getting an alarm? Yes, it is because of some of the mechanics of how those uh, sensors are turned on by pressure. So um, it's a limitation. I uh, wish it wasn't there. I wish, it, I wish I could say there's no possibility that you'll ever have a blowout and not be informed of it, but there is a small uh, possibility that you could have a blowout and not be informed of it. Our tire pressure monitoring system, as well as other in the industry, what they're really good at is showing pressure that's below a certain alarm and showing slow pressure, sl low pressure leaks or, or slow leaks and uh, fast pressure leaks. So I uh, hope that clarifies that and uh, helps you with that understanding. Okay, that's it. I hope this is allows you to make uh, better informed decisions about whether tire pressure monitoring system is good for you and uh, worth the uh, financial investment. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email or call us. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Uh, that information will be at, at the end of the video and then uh, down below in the comments section also. So thank you for your attention and uh, good luck, Godspeed. Thank you.